Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Esme and I'm a producer here at the How To Academy and you've tuned in for a special Ink Spots event with Rob Bidolf, or as you might know him, Draw With Rob. So Rob is an author and an illustrator and he became a viral sensation over lockdown when he started making very helpful videos for parents, um, posting illustration tutorials online. Uh, today he's going to be giving a short talk and then he'll be showing you how to draw something from his upcoming book, which none of you will have seen yet, called Monster Madness. After this, Rob will be answering your questions. These can be about anything, about life as an illustrator or about art tips, anything you can think of. Please send in lots and I'll try and get through as many as possible. But um, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Rob Bidolf. Oh, thanks Esme. Lo it's lovely to be here. I don't know if everyone can see me. Am I on the screen? I hope I'm on the screen. Hopefully everyone can see me. Um, it's really lovely to be here this morning. Um, yes, my name is Rob Bidolf, but more and more people know me these days as um, Draw With Rob. So I think I might have to um, change my passport to Draw With Rob. Um, but I'm delighted to be here this morning. It's a lovely sunny day here in London. Um, I've already posted one Draw With Rob um, video this morning um it was of a kangaroo that went up online on my youtube channel at 10 o'clock so if you haven't watched that yet go and check that out after this video but this is fun isn't it this is a live draw with rob and i haven't done too many of those so it's super exciting to be here right this is what i thought i would do today as esme has already told you i thought i would first of all start by telling you a little bit about how i became an author and illustrator because i know lots of people want to know uh, lots of people think it's a nice job to do and lots of people want to know how you get to do that as your job. So I thought I would tell you a bit about that. And then after that, we are going to do our little live drawing together, as Esme mentioned. Right. So I'm going to try and share my screen now. Let's see if we can do this. I might need tech support in a minute, but I think I think this is going to work. There we go. Hopefully you can all see that on your screen now. It's my name and some clouds. And um. I want to show you this picture here. Now, this is a picture of me, believe it or not, when I, I think I was about six years old in this picture. And when I was six years old, there were two things that I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, now, whenever I do a live event in person, I always ask the children what they want to be when they grow up. And they always put their hands up and they say, you know, some of them say things like, you know, a, um, a fireman or a doctor. But some of them also say things like, a dragon and a dinosaur, um, which is fun. But when I was little, there were two things that I wanted to be. One was a footballer. My uncle was a footballer and I love football. I still love football. Um, and so I wanted to be a footballer. But the other thing was something called an illustrator. So somebody who draws pictures for a living. The reason that I wanted to be an illustrator can be traced back to this drawing here, which I did when I was in reception. And it's a picture of some children dancing around a maple. The reason I did this particular picture is because at my school, we were about to have a summer fair and ahead of the summer fair, there was a drawing competition announced in assembly. Everyone in the whole school could enter. You just had to draw a picture of something to do with the summer fair. So I drew this picture here of children dancing around a maypole. And if you look very carefully up in the top left hand corner, you can see that someone's written a little letter P on it. And that P stands for prize because I was very lucky and I won first prize in the drawing competition in the whole school. And I can remember the day that my teacher, my head teacher actually came into the classroom and said, right, which one of you is Robert? And I thought, oh no, I'm in trouble. What have I done now? And I sort of put my hand up, I stood up, I went to the front of the class and he said, congratulations, you won first prize in the drawing competition. <gasps> wow, I couldn't believe it. Pretty quickly, I thought to myself, right, what's my prize gonna be? It's probably gonna be, I don't know, it's gonna be a new bike or something, isn't it? Maybe." a Nintendo Switch, something like that. Oh no, it was neither of those things. Do you know what my prize was? It was a pencil. <laughs> I know, that does not sound very exciting, does it? But do you know what? I really treasured that pencil because that pencil stood for something. It stood for the fact that somebody thought I was good at drawing. And I don't really think anyone had ever said that to me before. So what happened was, as I got older and even more stylish, look how cool I look in that picture, proper fashion icon I was in my youth. Um, thanks, Mum. Thanks for dressing me like that. Um, as I got older and even more stylish, 
I carried on drawing. One of my favourite things to do was take my favourite books that my teachers and my parents would read to me and I would write my own stories for those characters and I would draw the pictures to go with them. As you can see here, I'd staple them down one side and make my own little books. I'd spend a lot of time making my own comics. So I would invent a whole cast of characters and, um, and they would all have all sorts of adventures and I'd write the dialogue, put it in the voice bubbles. I'd even do like the puzzle pages in these comics and I'd photocopy them and hand them out to my friends at school. I spend a lot of time copying my favourite um, cartoon characters as well. And do you know what? That's a really good way of getting better at drawing because you get to see how other people put their characters together. And it's really good for things like penmanship and colouring in, you know, going slow when you get to the edges. And with all drawing, you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And I was basically, if I wasn't outside playing football, I was spending all of my spare time drawing pictures, making comics, copying my favourite cartoon characters. And so I think I did this one here when I was about nine years old. So by the time I was nine, I was getting really quite good at all those little tricks and tips, you know, going slow when you get to the edges and stuff like that. And I was getting so good. My teachers at school started to say to me, you know, actually, we think you're quite talented. And maybe when you're older, you should think about going to a place called art college. Now, I didn't know what art college was. But somebody said to me, basically, it's just like school, except you get to do drawing all the time, drawing and painting all the time. And that sounded pretty good to me. So as I got older and older and I went up through secondary school and I got to the age of 18 when I had when I when it was time to go off to university, I decided to go off to art college where I spent three years painting fruit. OK, <laughs> you name a fruit. I probably did a painting of it. And it was lovely. I loved it. I loved painting. But when it came to the time that I had to leave art college and find a job, I could not find a job as an apple painter anywhere. So <laughs> I ended up getting uh, getting a job working for lots of very famous newspapers and magazines. And I would do the design of these magazines. And that was a really, really nice job. But I always used to think to myself, do you know what? I remember those days when I used to make my own comics and my own books. And maybe that's something that I should have done for a living. Then something happened to me that changed everything. I had children of my own. These are my three daughters. The little one is Poppy, the middle one is Kitty, and the big one is Ella. And that little cat, not so little cat actually, she's quite a round cat, uh, is my cat. She snuck in to my picture and she's got a very embarrassing name. Anyone who watches my Draw With Rob videos will uh, know her name already because we did a drawing of her last week. Her name, oh dear, I'm so embarrassed to tell you this. Her name is Catface. I, I know, silly, isn't it? But she's one of those cats who just turned up in our garden one day and we started saying, you know, Catface is back again. And then before we knew it, she moved in. So now she's like Catface Biddle. She's our cat. So super embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but yes, I had children and that changed everything for me because I started buying lots of picture books to read to them at bedtime. Here is a few of them now. You might recognise some of these. These were our favourites. There we go, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, Caterpillar by The Genius. That is Eric Carle. There's some by Cress of the Cow. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. That's my absolute favourite by Dr. Zeus. Oliver Jeffers, Lauren Child, all sorts of brilliant, brilliant picture books. And as I would read these books to my girls at night, I thought to myself, do you know what? I think I might be able to write a picture book. Now, this next one, I bet you've all read this next one, The Tiger Who Came to Tea. Yes, I thought to myself, do you know what? I think I might be able to write a picture book story and I think I might be able to do the drawings to go with it too. But do you know what? You've got to practice. Like I said earlier, if you want to get good at something, you need to practice, don't you? So if you want to get good at drawing, you need to do lots of drawing practice. If you want to learn how to play, play the piano, you need to do lots of piano practice. If you want to write and illustrate a children's picture book, you need to practice drawing some things that children might like to look at. So I went away with my pens and pencils and I started drawing scenes of things that children might like to read a book about. So I did this pirate scene here. I did some dinosaurs, aliens, spaceships, that kind of thing. Then I thought I need to practice drawing some children. So here we go. Here's a page full of girl characters. Here's a page full of boy characters. And then it suddenly struck me. Do you know what? There's always lots of cute animals in picture books. So here we go. We have a page full of lions and tigers and elephants and pandas and dogs and cats. We've got some meerkats. We've got a whale. We've got a great big round hippopotamus. We've got a giraffe. All sorts of pictures I drew. And what I did, I printed them all out onto great big pieces of paper. I put those big pieces of paper into a folder. I put that folder under my arm. I got on the tube and I went into the middle of London to the offices of the publishers. Now, publishers are people that make the books. 
And I went into the offices with all of my drawings and I put them all out on a big table and I said to the publishers, right, what do you think? Do you think I am good enough to make a children's book? And when they got to this page of animals in particular, there was one group of animals that they liked more than any other. And those animals were, I wonder if you can guess, those animals were the penguins. Two or three of the publishers I met said to me, we really love your penguin characters. Do you think you can come up with a story for them? So I thought to myself, right, a penguin is a kind of bird, right? But it is a kind of bird that doesn't fly. So what if I wrote a story about a penguin who does fly? How can I get a penguin up into the sky? I know. What if he goes out flying a kite on a very, very windy day and ends up getting blown away? So that's the story that I wrote. It's all about this chap called Penguin Blue. He goes out with his kite on a windy day. He gets blown away across the sea. His friends, they all grab onto his feet. They try and help him. But they all end up getting blown away across the sea. And they end up in a place that penguins aren't usually found. They end up in, on a jungle island. And they have to think of a clever way of getting back home again. So I wrote that story and I showed it to the publishers and said, what do you think? Is it, is it any good? And they said, do you know what? We really like it. We're going to publish it for you. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. For me, that was a total dream come true. The best thing about it was they said that I could write some more books too. So I went away and wrote this one, which is called Grr, which is all about a bear who loses his growl. I wrote one about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with all the other sausage dogs. And it's called Odd Dog Out. I wrote a pirate penguin story. Of course I did. Why wouldn't you want to read a story about a pirate penguin? That one's called Sunk. My middle daughter, Kitty, had an imaginary friend when she was little called Kevin, who she used to, whenever her room was untidy, she used to blame it on Kevin. So one day I said, well, what does Kevin look like? And she said, well, he's really big and wide and he's covered in vanilla coloured fur and lots of pink spots and he's only got one tooth. And I thought, well, that sounds like a book if ever I heard a book idea. So I drew a little picture of him and said, is that what he looks like? And she said, yes. So I wrote a story about him. It's called Kevin. I've written loads of dinosaur stories here about little baby dinosaurs. And I've written this one called Show and Tell about a class of children who bring in really crazy things for show and tell. So I've written lots of books and illustrated them myself. These are some books that I've illustrated for other authors. So I like to do that too sometimes. That's super fun. And I even got to do uh, illustrate a book for the great Michael Bond. Now you will know Michael Bond because he wrote the Paddington stories, which you hopefully lots of you have read. Certainly lots of you will have seen the Paddington films. So I was super honored to be asked to illustrate uh, his character called Parsley the Lion. So check out that book. It's a really, really fun one. Um, and this is exciting. I have written my first chapter book for slightly older children. So I'm going to say it's about Harry Potter age. OK, and that comes out this September. So at the moment, I'm super, super excited about that. And it's called Peanuts Jones. That's Peanut there with the with the orange hair in, up in a bun not like that at the top of her head. That's Peanut Jones. And it's called Peanut Jones in the Illustrated City. And if I do say so myself, it's a really super fun story that will have you on the edge of your seat. So you should check that one out in September when it comes out. Right. I think I've been, oh, there we go. There's the cover. I thought I'd show you the cover of the book. Not many people have seen the cover of the book, actually. So there we go. You're super honoured to see that. Right. Draw with Rob. That's probably why you're here. That's why I'm known best. So Draw with Rob is something that I started right at the beginning of the pandemic, back in March of last year. I thought they're about to close the schools. There's going to be lots of children looking for things to do while they're stuck at home. There's going to be lots of parents who are looking for their children, looking for things for their children to do. And I thought what I can do, I do these draw along things at all of my live book events. What I can do is video one or two and I'll put them up online and see if that helps people out, gives them sort of half an hour where they've got something to do. So I had the idea on the Sunday. I recorded the video on the Monday. I put it up online on the Tuesday and on the Wednesday, I was on the news at 10 because so many people <laughs> tuned in to watch these videos. So it's been super exciting to see all these lovely drawings that the children have been doing. They all send me their pictures every week. And uh, as you can see, the quality of the artwork is astonishing. Look at these brilliant drawings. Look at these smiling faces, very proudly holding up their pictures. And it makes me super proud to see how well everyone is doing with their drawings and how happy they are to show me their pictures. So it has been a super, super lovely thing to do. And guess what? Last May, so about a year ago, we even broke a world record for the largest online art class. 
when about 50,000 households tuned in to my YouTube channel to draw this whale with me live. So we think there was about 150,000 people drawing the whale with me live. And you know what? Even when I, even today, when I go out walking my, when I take my dog Ringo out for a walk, I see lots of these whales still stuck in the windows. <laughs> They're a bit yellowed with, you know, because of the sun, but it makes me super proud to think that. And here we are, here we are, here, just to prove we broke the world record, here I am with my world record certificate. So that was super fun. And so many people wanted me to do these drawings every single day. I just didn't have time to do one every day. So what we did, we made lots of activity books so that when I wasn't recording a Draw With Rob video, uh, you could still do some drawing with me by getting these books. So there's three books out today. So now I wonder, Esme, I wonder if you can, hang on, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I wonder if you can put the camera onto me. Hang on, once I work out how to stop sharing my screen. There we go. Hopefully you can see me. I don't know if you can, um, but I have got something super exciting to show you because I the fourth Draw With Rob book is coming out in a few weeks time, but I got sent the very first copy of it yesterday. And here it is. It's called, I think Esme mentioned it earlier, it's called Draw With Rob Monster Madness. And I'm so proud of it. It's so nice when a new book um, arrives because you sort of remember doing the drawings, but it's a bit of a blur because I do them so quickly. And so it's so nice to see all of the things that I did in an actual book form. So there's loads of draw alongs in there, but there's also things like this. Look, it's Frank, Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory and you have to find lots of hidden things in there. So there's loads of activities too, and pages where you have to finish off drawing the monsters and that kind of thing. So it's super, super fun. And so to celebrate, I thought we would do a little draw along of one of the monsters that appears in this book. I hope that's okay with you. So Esme, if you wouldn't mind switching the cameras from my face to my hands, that would be really good. There we go. There's my hands. There's my piece of paper. So everybody, just in case you've not watched a Draw With Rob video before, this is how it works. Lots of people, when I go into schools and do festivals and things, lots of people say to me they don't think they're very good at drawing. And I say, well, do you know what? Everybody can draw. It's just that some people need a little bit more help with the order that we do the drawing in. And that's where I come in, you see. So the way it works is I do, we break these drawings down into little tiny bite-sized pieces, okay? So I'm gonna draw a very simple shape or, or a line or something like that on my piece of paper here. Then I will stop for a second. You copy exactly what I do. Then I will draw a bit more. Then you draw, then I draw. Then you draw, then I draw, then you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And at the end, we are going to end up with a lovely drawing of one of the monsters from my new book, Monster Madness. So grab yourself a piece of paper, grab yourself a pen or a pencil. You might need something to colour with a bit later, although you might want to do the colouring part when, when I'm gone. So you can spend a bit of time, you know, going slow when you get to the edges. Remember, I talked about that earlier. But I think we're ready to go. So we are going to start our drawing. Well, do you know what? We're going to start it a little bit differently to my usual Draw With Rob videos, because I'm going to take a pencil, okay? And very lightly on my piece of paper, I'm going to draw a big circle like that. It sort of takes up the top two thirds of my piece of paper. It's not a perfect circle. Don't worry about that, because what I always say is there's no right or wrong answer to drawing, okay? It's not like maths. You don't, it's, there's no perfect answer. Drawing is subjective. So if you make a little mistake, like I did there with my little circle, just keep on drawing because actually often it's those little imperfections and those mistakes that give your drawing character, okay? So don't worry if you make a mistake, just keep on going. Trust me, you'll be happy with what you end up with at the end. Now, the reason I've done this, this uh, little circle in pencil uh, first is because this, this circle is gonna act as a guide for the next thing that I draw. Because I am going to draw a sort of circle, but I'm going to draw a sort of zigzaggy circle. So I just wanted to give myself a little guide to make it a bit easier for myself as I do that. So once you've drawn your circle very lightly, I want you to go over the top of it in a kind of zigzaggy way. So I'm going to go all the way around the circle with a zigzag line like this. And this is going to be our monster's body. And the reason it's all zigzaggy is because this particular chap that we are drawing today is lovely and furry. And those zigzaggy lines just make him seem a bit furry. There we go. Do you see what I mean? So that pencil line just acted as a guide because otherwise it would be quite tricky to get that right. Okay, right. 
The next thing we're going to do is inside our zigzaggy circle, I want you to draw a regular circle, so a smoother circle, quite big, so fairly close to the edges, all the way around like that. Okay. As you can see, my circles are not perfect. Don't worry about that. Trust me, your drawing will have lots of character by the end of it. Okay, now inside that circle, I want you to draw another circle, a little bit smaller, right in the middle of that circle, like that. So basically, we've drawn three circles so far. And guess what? We're about to draw a fourth one, and a fifth one, and a sixth one. So this is a very circle-heavy drawing. Okay, so the next circle, we, we're going to draw one sort of up towards the top left-hand corner of the circle we just drew around about a centimetre and a half in diameter, okay? Then, the next circle, I want you to imagine that the one we've just drawn isn't there, and you're going to draw another one inside the, the one we drew before that. Wow, this is getting complicated, isn't it? Do you see what I mean? And it's just tucked in behind that one, okay? And then the last circle we're going to draw is going to be a very tiny one down here. Wow. Don't worry, everything will make sense in a moment. In fact, probably now. What I want you to do next is just colour this circle in. So the second to last one that we drew, I want you just to colour it in with whatever you're using to draw your picture. Just like that. And I wonder if you can see an eye starting to appear. If I draw lots of little lines like that coming out from the the black circle we've just drawn, like that, look, now you can see an eye appearing. This bit here is the white of the eye, this is the iris, and this bit's the pupil. And these two circles are like the highlights in the eye, so a little bit of sort of manga style highlights, okay? The next thing to do for our monster, I should say, shouldn't I, this monster has only got one eye because lots of monsters only have one eye. Some of them have three, some of them have two, some of them have 24, but this one in particular has only got one. So what I want you to do is around this monster's one eye, let's give him or her some eyelashes. So lots of little lines going all the way around that big circle shape like that. Cool, cool, huh? Okay, let's give our monster some legs coming straight out of his hairy round body. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a vertical line going right down to the bottom of our page, like that, just one vertical line. Then at the bottom of that, I want you to draw a big horizontal line going all the way along the bottom, about the same width as that zigzaggy circle that we did right at the beginning. There we go. Okay. The next thing to do is another vertical line, very close to that first one that we did, but we're not going to go right down to the horizontal line. We're going to leave a little gap at the bottom. So like that. Okay. And then let's do the same on the other side of that middle vertical line. So you're doing two vertical lines that stop just short of the horizontal line. Like that. Then from this point here at the bottom of the left hand vertical line, I want you to come up at a slight diagonal, then start curving around and join up with the end of that line there. And that's going to be one of our monster's feet. We're going to do a mirror image of that on the other side. So we're going to go up, down, join up, like that. Then add three little lines in there, three little lines in there for little claws. And there's our monster's feet. And the last part of this monster, which I'm going to call this monster Little Red, Okay, you'll see why, because I'm going to colour it in red in a minute. Little Red needs some horns. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a horizontal line coming out from the side of his head like that. And then we're going to do a vertical line. So a little right angle. And then from the top of that vertical line, we're going to come down, going to go around, and we're going to join up to the side of his head like that. That's going to be one of his horns. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Horizontal, vertical, Come down, go around, like that. And there is our little little red, okay? So now it's time to colour in little red. I'm going to go super fast here, so my colouring is not going to be as neat as usual. Now, the rules are with Draw With Rob, 
there are no rules when it comes to colouring, especially when we're drawing a monster, because do you know what? Monsters, I've never actually seen a monster in real life. So we don't know what colour they actually are, do we? I mean, if we were drawing, sometimes, you know, if I'm drawing a lion or something like that, even then I say, you don't have to draw your lion, lion coloured, you know, you can do a rainbow coloured mane, you can do whatever you like, because it's all about just being creative and expressing yourself. And if you want to do a lion with a rainbow coloured mane, you can do that. But with monsters, you know, you can do anything you like. So mine's just going to have a little red furry body like that. It's quite handy that he's furry because it doesn't matter too much that this is quite messy colouring. In fact, I'm just going to add some lines in like this, which sort of make him look even more furry than he otherwise might. I'm going to add a bit of darker shading just over on this side, just to make him appear slightly more three-dimensional. But as you can see, I'm going super fast. But yes, with your monsters, you know, you can make yours pink with purple spots if you like. Do whatever you fancy. I'm going to give mine a little green eye like that. Super fast colouring. In fact, I'm going to give him green horns too. There we go. One, two, like that. Sometimes, even if you colour really quickly, it can still work really well. Let's give him green legs. Come on. We'll make him colour coordinated, this particular chap. As I said, you can do anything you like with yours. I will show you a couple of little details that will help with your drawing. I'm going to take a slightly darker green here. Just going to add a bit of darker green around the edge of my iris there, just to make it a bit more three-dimensional. Let's shave these horns in a bit. I'm imagining my light's coming in from the top left, so I'm going to add a bit of dark shading in these areas here and here. A bit of dark shading underneath there, like that and a bit on that side there. So wherever the light's coming from, if you decide your light's coming in from the top left, then the opposite of that needs to be darker. So the bottom right areas need to be darker. So there would be a bit of dark shadow at the top of his legs that's cast by his furry body. Maybe these sides of his legs would be a bit darker and that side of that foot would be two. And then you can even take a, an even dark green. You sort of build it up layer by layer and pretty soon, can you see, we're getting a nice sort of 3D effect. And I actually quite like the fact that you can see all my pencil marks. It sort of makes it a bit more vibrant, this drawing. Sometimes when I do my draw with Rob videos, my shading is pretty much perfect. And uh, that's nice as well sometimes, but this one in particular, I think looks really nice and lively with all the pencil lines. The last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add just some real stripy bits on the horns like that make him look a bit more like, I don't know, goat's horns or something, I guess. There we go. And there is my drawing of Little Red, the monster, from my new book. I'm going to add a little bit. This is my favourite colour. You can see it's my favourite colour. Look how tiny that pencil is. I use it all the time. It's so useful when you're drawing white objects, like the whites of the eyes, because you can just add a little bit of this sort of aqua marine sort of teal colour and it just helps with the shading of white areas. And I use it a lot for shadows. Now, if you've watched my drawings or videos, you know all about shadows. If you just add a bit of scribble around the part of your character that is standing on the floor, and if you make that a little bit darker right next to where their feet are hitting the floor, look at that, it makes it look sort of 3D. It makes it look like they're standing on a surface. Okay, the very last thing that we need to do for our works of art, as I always say, we need to design them so that everyone knows who has created these works of genius. There we go, with my signature, I'll have a little kiss, why not? And there we go, that is how you draw a very quick monster. And shall I show you him? Look, if I show you my book, the book. Doo -doo -doo. There he is, hiding on the cover, Little Red. There's a Little Red. So, I hope you've had fun drawing Little Red with me today. Now, if you want to send me a picture, your picture of Little Red, what you could do is get somebody to take a picture of your drawing. And then if you post it on social media using the hashtag draw with Rob, and um, if you at me, I'm at Rob Bidolf on Twitter and at R Bidolf on Instagram. If you at me, then I will get to see it. And maybe you should at How To Academy too, because I'm sure they would like to see all of your drawings um, as well. So do, do post them on social media so I can see them because it'd be lovely to see. Because in real life, of course, I get everyone to hold their drawings up and get to see them in real life. But we're not in real life now, are we? So there we go. That's me done. Oh, I've gone over a bit. I'm sorry, Esme, I've gone over a bit. But I gather we have some questions, don't we? So I am ready 
when you are Esme to answer some questions. Hi Rob, that was amazing. Please do, if you've managed to draw along with that, please do share it with us because I'd love to see everything you've created. We have loads of questions coming in, so it might be quite quick fire if that's all right. You ready? Okay, okay, okay. I'm ready. Go. Right. Okay. Um, we have Amelia, who's 11, and she wants to know what's the hardest picture you've ever drawn. Oh wow. Well, do you know what? Sometimes uh, in my books there is um, some very detailed pictures because I find when you're reading a picture book at bedtime um, you need to include things in the drawings that you might not notice the first time you read it in fact you might not notice them until the sixth or seventh time you read it so what we do we put in loads and loads and loads and loads of detail so that you might spot something a little funny little detail on the fifth or sixth time and it sort of really adds to the experience so those um, detailed drawings are probably the hardest ones because they take a long time in fact while we're talking about this new book shall I show you the one I think I showed you earlier that Frankenstein's laboratory one there that I drew, it's got so much detail in it. Um, I don't know if you can see, but like if you look under the desk, there's like spare hands and spare brains in jars, all sorts of things for people to spot. So those ones tend to be the most difficult, but the most difficult animal, I've always found horses very difficult to draw. I don't know why. And so I faced my fears a few weeks ago and we did a draw with Rob episode, horse episode. And actually it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, so you know. You can draw anything really, just again, you just need to put the practice in. <laughs> but good question, a very good question, Amelia. Um, we have another one from Winnie, who is nine, and she says, who is your favorite character ever? Either one you've created or one that somebody else did? Well, oh, that's a good question. Well, Winnie, I've, I have a character called Winnie. Maybe, you, I don't know if you know this, but I have a little dinosaur in my Dinosaur Juniors books, a little T-Rex called Winnie. She is one of my favorite characters, she is oh. cool. My favourite one of my characters is probably Odd Dog, the Odd Dog Out. So that sausage dog one with the rainbow scarf. I really like um, drawing her. She's fun. Um, and then my favourite character that somebody else has drawn. I, I, did I mention earlier that I really like The Grinch? That's my favourite children's book. I love The Grinch. Um, I think he's a brilliant character because he's so conflicted. He's sort of nasty, sort of evil, but we sort of know why he's evil. And actually he redeems himself at the end. So I think The Grinch would be my favourite character. A great answer what a great character um, we have Lauren wanting to know which art college you went to oh I went to well I went to two because when you go to art college when you first leave school you go to art college you do something called a foundation course so you do your I did a level art I did a level art a level maths pure maths with statistics that's a weird combination isn't it and a level geography weird but then I, I did that and then I went off to art college uh, uh, to do my foundation course now that's when you do a little bit of everything because okay, because you need to decide what area of art you want to go into so it's a really fun year and I, you do a bit of painting a bit of sculpture a bit of photography a bit of graphic design a bit of textile design you do all sorts of things and then you at the end you specialize in your particular chosen area so I went to uh, an art college Hertfordshire College of Art which was in St Albans oh sorry um I don't know why that shouldn't be doing that should it Sorry, a bit off. My doorbell's ringing. Um, <laughs> um, I went to St Albans to do my foundation course, and then I went to um, Middlesex University to do my degree, which was actually in a subject called visual communication design. I don't know what that is really, but it was super fun. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's where I went. Great, great answers. Um, we have Tommy, who says that he loves your drawings, and he wants to know: Do you plan on drawing a rhino anytime soon? I, you know what? I do have a rhino character actually in up my sleeve, and uh, he is on my list for draw with Rob. But I'm not sure when I'm going to get to do it. But I will do it. I definitely will do a rhino at some point. It's quite cute. I think it might even be a baby rhino character. But right, aren't rhinos just the most amazing animals to look? They look like they're wearing sort of armor plating, don't they? they look like they're wearing suits of armor. The the most bizarre looking creatures. I don't think if they didn't exist and you sort of drew one, people would say what. You're just making that up. Come on, that's crazy. But they are amazing looking things. So yes, I will do a draw with Rob Rhino episode at some point. Ah, oh, well, Tommy, look out for that. Um, we have Esther, age 12. You might not be able to do this. She says, can you try and draw something with your right hand, please? What, now? Yeah, can you do that? All right, let me see if I can find a piece of paper. All right, hang on. All right. Okay. Draw right. something with my right hand. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. Right, okay. I'll get a pencil. Okay. My right hand. Um, okay, I'm gonna try and draw a Gregosaurus because he's super quick. 
There we go. It's not too bad. Wow. Yep. A little Gorgosaurus just giving a nostril. There we go. A little arm down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bit of shadow, like I was saying. There you go. That's not bad. Not too bad. I'm one of those strange. I'm one of those strange people, though. I'm slightly. And basically, I am left-handed, but only for two things, drawing and writing. And I'm playing, when I play pool or snooker, I play left-handed. Everything else, right-handed, right-footed. I even use scissors with my right hand. So I'm slightly weirdly ambidextrous, but that's not too bad. I'm quite pleased with that. That was amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, we have, a oh my gosh, we have so many questions. Um, we have one question from Nova, who's seven, and she wants to know if Catface and your dog are friends. Well, first of all, Nova, you have the best name I've ever heard in my life. Congratulations. Um, yes, my dog, I've got my dog's called Ringo. Uh, he's a Cocker Spaniel, he's about two. Are they friends? Uh, I would say they tolerate each other. Cat faced is sort of rules of roost because she's been here for a long time. She's about 15. Um, and but Ringo um, is sort of much, more, much louder and more energetic. So he, sometimes he wants to play with her and she's not interested. But the thing about cats is they have weapons. Don't they, cats? They have claws. <laughs> so I think Ringo knows this and he knows who the boss is. But they're all right. They sort of, you know, they're quite happily. They sort of, they fall asleep in the, in the, in the living room together every evening. So I think they're all right. Yeah, they're quite friendly, yeah. I'd say. Um, Tasneem and Trinity both have quite similar questions. They've asked how you get inspiration for your drawings and what do you do when you run out of ideas? Do you ever run out of ideas for all your different characters? Um, well... Uh, it took me quite a long time to get published. I know when I was telling my little story earlier, it sounded like it was very easy, but actually there was, there was quite big gaps in between some of those stages. So it took me about four years um, to actually get my book published. And in that four years, I built up lots and lots and lots of ideas. So um, what I do, ideas sort of, they sort of strike at the weirdest times. You know, you could be in the shower or just doing the shopping or driving the car. So what I do, I have um, a big Google document on my phone that I just literally, when I have an idea, I quickly write it down, you know, one sentence, because I don't know about you, but ideas come in one ear with me and then they disappear about a second later. So if I don't write them down, I forget them forever. So I have this huge Google document with hundreds and hundreds of like one sentence story ideas. Most of them are totally rubbish, but some of them have potential. Um, so I have got a big backlog of ideas. So actually, and the way it works with me is that I've got a book contract for quite a long time in advance and so I know what my next few books are going to be already so I know what I'm going to be doing until about 2025 weirdly and it sort wow. of works like that in advance and so it's quite nice because I don't have that panic of running out of ideas because I know what they're going to be for quite a long time so I've got a lot of time to kind of work out what I'm going to do um, and you know what I don't think I will run out of ideas and certainly not for the, it, it's quite tricky with Draw with Rob because as I said I've done a hundred and something videos so you do run, I do sometimes think, oh my gosh, what can I draw next? But I always manage to think of something. And I've got such, all, all of my little readers and my viewers of my videos, my little artists, they always, always suggest really cool things to draw. So when they do, I write a little note down of those, those things to draw. Like Rhino, for example, today, I will definitely draw a Rhino at some point. So um, no, I'm not quite lucky. I, I don't really, I have got a long list of ideas in my back pocket. So it's, um, I don't think mm -hmm. it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Well, we've actually got loads of suggestions coming in. We have oh, really? two people, both called Jessica, but one's nine and one's seven. One suggested a griffin, which is amazing. One suggested oh, wow. a cat. And Nova said, would you ever just draw a view of something? So they've got loads of ideas, loads of ideas. Well, I'm, I'm making a note of these. Um, a view of something. That's quite good. I haven't done a landscape. I've done a few. I've done things like I've done a rocket ship. I've done vehicles, done rockets and trains and, and things like that. Um, but no, I haven't done a landscape, so maybe maybe I should have a go at doing a landscape. Maybe we can recreate recreate you know a, a, cl a classic work of art like the Haywain or something. Wow, <laughs> that'd be fun. That'd be fun to do. You know, you know, a fifteen minute draw along video. Um, we have a question from Charlie, who's ten, and he or she wants to know what was the first book that you read, or what did you love as a child reading. 
Well, that's a good question, Charlie. The first book I've got, I, I have got a good memory for these things, weirdly. I've got one of, I can't remember what I did last week, but I can remember every single book that I read at primary school in order, pretty much weirdly. And the very first book that when, when you're first learning to read, I remember we learned to read with a book called The Cherry Family. Um, now, I have looked for this book everywhere on, on online and I cannot find it. So I don't know who the author is, unfortunately. But the second book we moved on to was Dogger by Shirley Hughes. And, um, and it's one of my absolute favourite picture books. You, I did flash it up on screen earlier, actually. And it's one that I've read to my daughters as well when, as well when they were little. Um, so that is probably... That's the first book I can remember the title and the author of. Um, and it's an absolute classic. It's a lovely, lovely story. And I also loved um, all the books by an author called Richard Scarry when I was little. And he, his books, they're, those books are about that big. And um, they're full. Remember I said earlier about detail in pictures being really important. Well, his, he is the master of that. And there are lots of his books were about things um, like they would, he would have a big cruise ship and he would do a cross section through the cruise ship and show you how you know, where the propellers were connected to the steering wheel, all that kind of stuff, and um, where all the crew slept and all this kind of thing. And I would spend hours poring over the drawings and copying them too. So he's probably my favourite illustrator from when I was young. So there you go. That's a great. You've answered so many questions there. So, so thank you for that. Um, we have, oh my goodness, we have so many suggestions coming in. I'm seeing Rabbit, Godzilla, Red Panda, Caterpillar. Right. Sports. I'm writing them down. <laughs> That's good. Red panda. I've got a red panda. I've got a red panda character, actually, so I can do that. Mm. Godzilla's a good one. Isabel, go find the red panda. It's on there somewhere. Um, Rob, that's all we've had time for today. I know you have a super busy day, so I should let you go. But everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We have so many questions piling in, and it's great to see you all. So many curious young artists out there. Um, as Rob said earlier, he's got so many books out already and he's got another one coming out in September. So, and I think another one coming out Christmas, Christmas one as well. Yeah, I've got so many, but it's ridiculous, crazy. You're going to be so sick of me <laughs> by Christmas. <laughs> You're the biggest fan in the world. And if you did manage to draw um, the amazing, uh, was it Little Red? Yeah. Um, Little Red. <laughs> Little Red from earlier. Do tag us yeah. on Facebook or Instagram, sorry, Twitter or Instagram so we can see them all. Rob, thank you so much. That was brilliant. It's been so much fun to chat to you and ask everyone's amazing questions. Oh, thanks, Esme. Thanks so much for having me. And everyone, do go and check out the How To Academy website because they do such amazing work. So really support them in every way that you can. It's been, um, and it's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Esme. It's been lovely um, talking to you and talking to all of you guys this morning. Hopefully we can have you back again soon with her peanut Jones. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. I hope you get some time outside and do some more drawing. Rob, have a great rest of your day. It's lovely to chat to you. Bye. <laughs>